Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. We have returning, uh, recurring guest, Holly Celiano, who's been gracious enough to join us uh, and give us her great information. That's always very important, accurate, and timely, and we're honored to have her back on the podcast again. Holly, thanks for joining the show. Thank you, John, for having me back on. So we were talking off camera, and there is a lot of breaking news going on. First one I want to hit on is Putin yesterday won his election in a landslide. I think it was 87%. And they are saying their elections are the most free with what they're doing over there. And that that's a huge sign uh, for him to win the confidence vote over there. The other thing that's really big that you and I were talking about is, and I don't know how many people are paying attention, but there is SEPA payment, which is it's a cashless payments in euro currency that are processed via the single euro, pay, euro payments area network. And what it does is it facilitates cross border transfers in 36 euro zones. And that just went live yesterday. So there to this entire global currency that we're all dealing with. There are so many pieces to this. This is another huge pie of the puzzle. So it's linking the European countries up with the Protocol 20, with the ISO 2022. So this is just another big piece of the pie to make the whole global thing happen, which if you're not paying attention, you can lose track of all these little pieces. So a lot of people think it's, um, you know, an event-driven or 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 date-driven. I believe it's both. I believe it's an event and a date-driven thing for this because there's certain things that do need to happen globally for this to happen, and then there's also certain dates that they put in place when these pieces come in to play, like the Protocol 20 and the SEPA payment schedule. And that just happened yesterday. A lot of people are focusing on, you know, King Charles possibly dying or Kate dying. They're not paying attention to what's going on with this big piece that just came out because they're looking at everything else. They're distracted. So um, I know you pay attention to all this financial stuff and wanted to get your take on that. Yeah, I know it's it's very important what you're talking about, Holly, because you know I think and I think you would agree that I'm sure most of the people here that are aware and you know invested in this would agree that a lot of these are are you know these peripheral events with the king or all that are while important are distractions to the, the whole of of the nucleus of what we're focused on. So I'm glad that you uh, that you're bringing this up and it's it my thought to or complimentary thought to you, Holly, is it's very interesting. And timely, they should bring this up because it just came uh, to our attention. We we posted it to our Telegram, as I know you see these things often, that Australia is now, what a surprise, not, not a coincidence, on the backs of the SEPA payment changes as of, I think, uh, the Sunday, the 17th, yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. Australia is announcing that they are really making a real strong push for their CBDCs and a cashless society to be enforced on these people, unfortunately. So you know, I pray that they're going to fight back and resist. And you could say that that's obviously the agenda of the enemy, but it's also, I think, wholly designed to, to you know, see the people stand up. You see the farmers standing up concurrently throughout the entirety of the world. And I, I sort of wonder if this isn't, you know, part and parcel of that same effect to get the people to stand up and say, no, we're, we're not going with a cashless society. Because unfortunately, for the remainder of the world, the U.S. is in a, in a special place in the aspect of, you know, we have the, in theory, the First Amendment and, of course, the Second Amendment with guns and the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, as we exercise them, you know, freely and intelligently, we have that, whereas a lot of the world does not have that. So that's kind of my um, additional thought to what you were sharing. And that, you know, all these things, a lot of this is by design to have the people wake up and stand up and say, no, we're not going to allow this to happen. They they push the threshold to see how much will the people take, or are you going to have your power and stand up and say no? Another really interesting thing with the SEPA payment plan, it's been one year um, since the 
the bricks came out that they went live with what they are doing with their, their gold payments. And here it is a year later with the SEPA payment. And this is, this is huge. It's, there's so many pieces. This is such a, a complicated system that they're putting in place that it's so hard to try to track what's going to make it actually happen, what we're all waiting for, because there's so many pieces to this. And the SEPA, how many people knew about this? Not many, but it is another big piece of this that is part of the puzzle to make it all come together. So it was um, big news yesterday. There's These are what are known as European payment rails. So this is another piece of that. Um, there's four former payment schemes that participants is the SCT, the SEPA credit transfer, the SEPA instant credit, the SDD, the SEPA direct debit core, which are debit cards and SDD business to business. So those are, are big pieces of this SEPA thing. Um, the 423 2023 SEPA payment schemes entered into full force yesterday, March 17, 2024. In the normie land, there's a buzz all over the internet that, you know, King Charles is dead and Kate is missing. Could it be a marker? Could be, we don't know. Um, they have you look over here. There's nothing to see here while you're, you're not looking at these financial pieces coming into play. It's the only entire Euro going digital officially that just happened yesterday. And what happened exactly one year ago, almost to the day, bricks went live. So there is a whole thing that they have date driven when this is all happening. Is it a, co a coincidence? Definitely not. I mean, there is no coincidence to this. It is, they have firm dates put in place. They're doing it when they're saying they're doing it. And we just don't know all the pieces that are coming into play to make it happen. Then there was protocol 20 recently went live to be able to handle all the volume and the smart contracts for all these financial products and derivatives. That's another big piece to all of this. Yesterday's takeaway was a major piece of the new financial system that officially went live. This is the battle and it is being won, this financial battle, it's being won. The Rockefeller banking system has now been officially been extracted from the cabal. It is running on Stellar and the XRPL, mm. the XRP private ledger. It is just um, distributed ledger technology on the cloud in concert with IBM, Cisco Systems, Quaint, the QNT, the, the Lynx, or Linux over ledger connecting the legacy banking computers. The SWIFT system website has said this phase is the end of coexistence, which I'm sure you've heard about, mm -hmm. meaning the end of traditional banking system, while the new system, as Charlie Ward and the Office of the Controller of Currency said, it has said three years ago, it's been up and running parallel. So we have the two financial systems running parallel and until they make the complete switch over where we're no longer using the old system, which is what we're waiting for, that's going to be when the currencies are all reset, we'll be on the new system. Mm -hmm. So yes. sorry, go ahead. So that this is all big news that most people aren't paying attention to. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a nice uh, another dovetail, Holly, to what you were just sharing about you know XLM and XRP and obviously the as we call it the X marks the spot triad of 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 you know cryptos that are are asset backed or will be asset backed um, ISO uh, stable coins. Um, we're watching in April, as you know, for uh, the case for XRP to be dismissed outright with no settlement and just a completely clean win. And also uh, the Bitcoin happening, which I know there's a lot of scuttlebutt about Bitcoin and 
you know, our belief watching it, as you've seen, is that uh, they're going to go through, uh, like other things, a significant, with the market, a significant flash crash. In fact, it's funny, uh, tying two things together, it was sort of comical because we reported on a telegram with others that uh, Janet Yellen is now predicting the fall of the U.S. dollar. She's really walking back her uh, inflation is not an issue now. And I would just love for our audience to kind of hear your, your musings on that. Well, I mean, the whole world is turning their back on the U.S. dollar. So, of course, she's got to say something and walk that back because the U.S. dollar is no longer the the leader, the petrodollar. They're all turning towards the, the BRICS nations is what they're, you know, they're, some countries are using the yuan. Um, so people don't want the dollar anymore. It's backed by nothing. They want something backing their currency. So they're using asset backed. So the U.S. needs to do something quickly or they're going to be left in the dust. And what would that be for the U.S.? We have a uh, USTN, which is an asset backed currency that's supposed to be going mm -hmm. Be announced, go live sometime when all of this whole financial piece that we're waiting on happens. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And and as we discussed before, Holly, you know, it's virtually impossible to keep up in real time with all the news because it's just coming at a precipitous rate. An example of that would be, you know, you and I talked offline about asking if you had heard about this and, and uh, it just came to our attention about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes ago. Uh, the Goldman Sachs executive Stephanie Cohen is now joining Cloudflare, so she's getting out of that piece, which would suggest to me that that you know all those big players are, are continuing to you know head for the exits, um, which accompanies really nicely you know the the Jamie Diamonds and the Zuckerberg selling off all their stock. There seems to be uh, a, a correlation with all these events. Well, there is. And, you know, there's so many things going on behind the scenes that we're not privy to. We don't know all the the inner workings that go on. We only see what's put out there that they're showing us. But behind the scenes, there is a whole nother takedown that we are not dialed into or privy to. But it is happening. And we can see some of the fallout when we see people selling off stocks or resigning or, you know, for instance, the SEPAC showing up and, you know, the protocol 20 and all these pieces, but the, the mastermind behind all of this, who we don't know who, who is doing that and calling the shots, there is so much going on and it is a massive, complicated, uh, undertaking to change over from one financial system to another. And I know people get frustrated of the delay and how long it's taking, but it, it's years to put all this together, to do it seamlessly where they're not, where there isn't a major ripple in the entire world's economy. It's got to be done slow and calculated and all these little pieces are just slowly added where you don't see a major ripple in the entire world because technically we should be, you know, with what's been happening, we should have a, an economic meltdown. We should have a banking disaster. This should have happened long ago and we haven't. Why haven't we? Because we have two parallel systems there, we're slowly being converted to the new one. We won't even know that we'll be on a new one. You know, those that are not paying attention will have no clue that there's a brand new system that they've just been switched over to. It'll just seem like business as usual to them with just different name. But it's been done to, to take from the old system and slowly integrate to a brand new system where the whole world still can function without a meltdown. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well said. Um, also want to get your take, Holly, on a couple of other matters because we're going to do a, a part two next week because there's just too much to, to carry and one to cover in one show. Um, but uh, uh, we and others, I'm sure, have reported, uh, Gold Telegraph was reporting about uh, China now emerging significantly with, with, with respect to Zimbabwe 
uh, because Zimbabwe has a tremendous amount of resources. I think most people know that. But what I thought was interesting is that a lithium is a big component of another resource that they naturally produce in ground. And uh, China is obviously one of the biggest buyers of gold, but it's not a coincidence to me that they're working heavily with Zimbabwe, who has very recently reported in Gold Telegraph and other related articles that they have every intention of returning their country back to a gold standard once right. they have new elections this summer. So we'd just love to have your take on that. Well, it's been a, a big kept secret on how wealthy Zimbabwe is and all their assets. And, you know, if you ever saw the movie, The Black Panther, it's, it is almost like the African countries have this invisible field to keep uh, the world from seeing how wealthy they are. But, you know, those in other countries do want to grab hold of their resources and be part of it because they have such tremendous resources. So if China is a big player and they want to take part in what they have and be part of that and Africa, Zimbabwe, all the African countries are going to be up and coming. They're really have posed as being third world countries, but they're going to be a major player on the stage with their resources. Because when you move to an asset gold back, they have the resources, they have it. it it's been hidden out in plain sight where people haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And don't forget, you know, obviously, you know, already just tying it into the equation, Nigeria has now made every uh, overture to get into BRICS. So, which is not far from Zimbabwe. So it's all, all the countries, they want to be part of BRICS. Yeah. They, they want to be part of that new club. Nobody yeah. wants the U.S. anymore, the U.S. dollar. Right. So we need yeah, to hurry up and uh, get on board. You know, there was talk that um, Texas has joined BRICS. Mm -hmm. Well, why Texas? Why not the USA? You know, that that makes you think, well, what is going on in Texas? Why are they applying to be part of BRICS? Well, the whole new government for the Republic is being set up in Texas. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that they're applying because that would represent the Republic that's being set up there, which would be the entire country of the USA. So, you know, pay attention to, to what's being done. And it's really connecting the dots of how all of this is put in play. Because as you and I have talked about, there is only, there's one shot to get this right. Everything mm -hmm. has to be done to the letter. Mm -hmm. Every I, I dotted, every T crossed, all the paperwork has to be legit. There can't be any loopholes that anybody, the deep state can come back and, and find fault with. It has to be rock solid, this whole transition, so that we don't ever go through this again. And those of us that are awake and aware, to be able to say that we were part of it, had to keep you know, role in it. We're awake. We were part of the movement to bring this about. I mean, it really is a historic moment of what we're living through that for future generations, you know, grandma and grandpa were part of that. You know, it, it's amazing. So as frustrating as everybody gets with the delay or the timing or whatever, it is being done for your benefit so that it is done properly in the right time. So there are things that they didn't even know how deep some of these deep state players were with the uncovering that they had to do. And it's taken, taken a very long time to uncover all of that and undo all of that because the corporations are tied in with the governments. The governments are tied into the banking and the banking controls everything. So we're not just talking about a new financial system. It is changing the entire scope of the world. It's undoing and unraveling all of that because they're all interconnected. They, they have this 
this web set up around the globe that can that controls everything. And to undo that, it's massive. It, it's so complicated. So for those that are frustrated, which I hear daily, I'm sure you do, mm -hmm. just understand the complexity of this. It's not just about people becoming wealthy. It's way beyond that. Yes, people are suffering and people are hurting and they're tired of the narrative. But if you look what's being done in the world, you can see that it is being done for your benefit. It's being, being done for the good, the greater good for humankind. It's being done for all the future generations. And, you know, sadly, it is a war. It's a spiritual war and it's being, it's against our minds. It's unlearning what we've been taught and unraveling a lot of that old way of thinking and forming new ideas and new ways of taking our power and control back. It's not power of the government. It is power of the people. And we need to realize how, how much power we have if we all come together as one and stand together and realize that, that we are the ones that need to take our country back. It's not a, a military just stepping in and, and doing away with everything or, or having Trump just come in and, and make everything great. It's us saying we need to come together, just like um, I told you I interviewed Mickey Khan, and she's paving the way, giving us the basically all the tools to take our power back. We have to take the power back. It's all of us coming together and kicking all those out of office that aren't serving us, that are doing disservice. And, and that really is, it's huge what they're doing and giving us all the tools, everything they have, it's on their websites. So it's all of us stepping up and just saying no, but that's being done globally. Around the world, everybody is saying no they don't want this way of living anymore yeah that's beautifully said and you covered a lot of ground just in that alone house so thanks for the very articulate synopsis uh just a a, a a thought really quickly is you know i'm 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 sure you've seen it i've seen it there's far too much division in the world and society and even in this community there's a lot of right fighting and and you know you know showing people up and trying to act superior God hates that kind of division, and it does us no good to do that. We're not always going to agree, and that's fine, but you know, tearing each other down or trying to be right at someone's expense is definitely not part of God's plan, as you know, and that's the enemy. That's Ephesians 6.12. He comes to seek, kill, and destroy, but God came that we would get life and life abundantly, and he wants unity with his people above all, and I think that's one of the cornerstone lessons that we're learning through this transition. Of course, we would all like it to happen faster. We don't all understand the nuances beyond what we can see that are happening that are much bigger than us. You know, his ways are, Isaiah, his ways are bigger than our ways, his thoughts, et cetera. Um, but in, in the final analysis, I think we'll all see that there was a reason for why things had to happen. And if we just keep moving towards that seminal goal of positivity and working together and unification against the enemy's plan, it will be summarily defeated. Um, so with that said, you had some really good, we always do, but you had some really good information that you shared on one of your channels that I thought would be good to highlight. Uh, a while back, I showed people some of the pictures of my Wells Fargo bank and how they had been you know, transitioning and morphing the overall image and layout of that respective bank in my area here in Southern California. But you had a nice story that corroborates with that from somebody you know in uh, up in the Bay Area in San Francisco um, who has had a similar um, overreach of stories. So I'd love for the audience to kind of hear that testimony, if you don't mind. Sure. I know a lot of people have been running to the banks and still a lot of banks deny the existence of, you know, the RV or being able to do anything with these currencies. And that just puts a lot of doubt in people's minds. Well, why are some people reporting that it's being done and others are not? 
I can't answer why some do and some don't, but this is from a friend of mine in the Bay Area. He has a personal uh, relationship with a banker who was in charge of six banks there. And so just last week, the banker did report that the, the RV is real. They will, if, how he put it, if you have Zim, you will go to a different location um, if you just have currency, you could go to the bank is how they put it. Um, and they admitted that it is real. And even the teller said that that he spoke to that ha he has a relationship with that the RV is very, very soon. They even have in their drawer the new USTN notes or, or in their vault, I should say. Um, so it's just waiting for that transition for it to happen. And it may be because of his relationship for so many years with this banker that he openly admitted it. But if you're just somebody off the street calling or going into a bank, nine times out of 10, they're going to deny that this is real. And a lot of them sign NDAs, which is why they will not talk about it. But if you have that relationship for so long, then yes, they they will talk to you about it. So um, it just leads that there is uh, credibility to the stories out there to have a banker admit that it is real and that he does know about it. So, um, you know, I thought it was a great story and it just confirms what we already know that it is real. It is close according to what this banker felt and um, as you and I have said, we're waiting for Iraq to announce their rate, and, and then that's going to rise on the Forex. They are trading on the commodity back screens. Um, it's not on the actual Forex yet, but mm -hmm. when that does happen, you know, I'm sure they're doing that for a reason, because if it came out on the Forex right now, everybody would run to the bank and exchange. So they're doing this behind the scenes where nobody can run and go and exchange because it's it's not a tradable currency yet. It's not international. Right. But we are getting there. It's it's just a matter of time. It's to me, it's way too hard to predict a timing. And I don't even like to give a timing or a date. I just like to look and see what's going on in the world and in the news. And just like with the SEPA piece, you can see all the different pieces of the puzzle come together where you could say, okay, we're almost there based on this, based on what Iraq is doing. And you can get a feeling for the timing. Yeah. I mean, it's to your point, Ali, it's, we talked about this before many times, but it's God's blessing. It's God's timing. We just need to trust him with the details because we will never find peace trying to find it in the world. You know, there's too much, outlays of information, too much analysis paralysis, but he's not a God of confusion. So when we just, you know, relax and trust him to the best of our ability and just take a step back and don't try to figure it all out on our own strength, you know, there, he, he will time this systematically and perfectly that again, won't make sense to us. It's not supposed to, but we will see in the aftermath that it was the perfect time to do things uh, the way that it was, that he orchestrated it. Um, I'm going to share one piece of information I shared with you just before I went live uh, that we posted on our, our Telegram channel, which I'll talk about at the end of the show. Um, I'll kind of leave it with this for now because we can pick this up next week. But I thought this was fascinating. Um, a friend of mine, uh, I don't claim anything that's not my own. I always source my information, as you know, being on the channel. But a good friend of mine, Zach Boyd, who's been a patriot, patriot truther like a lot of people watching, uh, he happened to be at home making dinner for his family. And he caught this picture. It's not AI generated. It's in real time on his TV, hell live vision. And he just had this on the background as white noise, but he just had uh, wheel of fortune. And I don't know if people can see this, but then go to the telegram, but on um, March 16th episode, again, it's going to be hard to see, but March 16th episode, they said the, the puzzle was, what are you doing? And it says currency exchange on it. So they're definitely putting out comms for people to see more and more just to kind of, I think, to test the waters. But that you, this is the kind of stuff you just can't make it up. Right. 
Absolutely. So, I mean, they're putting it out there for people to have confidence, to not give up, to have hope. And they're sadly, as you and I have talked about in these communities, there we have been infiltrated. There are people that don't want us to exchange and they put disinformation out there. Right. They sow fear and doubt and say, this isn't going to happen. And the whole purpose is to have you give up and, you know, just sell your currency. But if you had it this long, hang on to it. It's real. It's going to happen. It's a matter of time. It's never been an if. It's always been a when. And we are coming up to that time where it will be happening because the world is finally ripe for it. The world is ready for it. All the financial system they've been transitioning us from the old to the new, right, right in our faces. We don't even see it. You know, it's being done in real time, mm -hmm. just slowly, systematically, another piece added. And before you know it, we're going to be getting our announcements to, to go do our exchanges. So you can't make it up because it's, it's, being done in real time, you can see it. It's real. Yeah, agreed. I've always felt, as you know, it's it's a suddenly moment. You know, I think it's going to be yes. we're going to wake up one day, not thinking about it. When our mind's not obsessed on it, it'll happen. You know, and yes. you know, as you know, uh, during during this holiday break, uh, you've got. Uh, it was interesting. I don't know if you heard this, but uh, Mustafa Kahimi or Kadimi, I think is he was one of the former prime ministers of Iraq prior to Sudani now. Uh, he and uh, Sudani are breaking their silence. I guess there's three uh, Iraqi uh, TV networks out there that they're going to be making announcements of, in terms of, you know, airing their thoughts about the reinstatement and things to do with it, reforms, taxes and tariffs and the HCL law and all that kind of stuff. And we're just watching to see when uh, Macron and Erdogan come into Iraq to sign all those things because Sudani is not going to go to the U.S. until that stuff is in place. As you know, because you're going to be meeting with Janine and the U.S. Uh, quote unquote government uh, and meeting with the officials there and meeting with Janine from the U.N. to ask her to turn on the purchasing power uh, digitally, as you said, on an asset backed platform, which she'll be eager to do because she her tenure ends in May and she was adamant she wants this as part of her legacy. You know, this is her her final salvo, if you will. So we're just kind of watching these things play out and, you know, patience is required. But the good side of things is that time moves so quickly that, you know, we're here one day and we're at the end of the week the next. So, uh, you know, we don't have to wish time away. It'll go fast enough on its own, as you well know. Um, Holly, any, um, as usual, last thoughts you want to impart to the audience and where can people find out more about you? So my last thoughts for the audience is, you know, just absolutely know that this is real and it is happening and don't give up and don't get discouraged and um you know be careful who you're listening to because if they say anything that's fear-based or this is not real then don't listen to that it, that's just meant to to lead you astray so hang in there um where they can find me well I'm doing the the same show with you with uh, at Chris at the real what it, real uh, real world real world. Um, they can find me there, and then I have my Telegram channels. Um, so I think that's it for for a wrap up for uh, where we are right now. And you know, everybody just continue believing, and we will get there. It's just a matter of time. Absolutely. Um, before we conclude, just to help you on, uh, add to what you said on the backs of uh, in contact information, because we are working together, um, we've created a uh, sort of a duality channel. The real world is now sort of a right brain part. I, I, there's been a little bit of confusion, so I just want to help clarify it for the audience. Um, it's been rebranded as Club Patriot. So again, think of it as a left brain, right brain type of equation. On the left side, you have Club Patriot, which is the foray into the, the new channel that we're creating. The reason we're creating this is to get away from bots and trolls and disinformation and commercials and all that kind of stuff that you deal with on certain traditional platforms. Uh, but it's also to create a 
uh, positive, loving audience that wants to share ideas and opinions and solutions and kind of like a discord, if you will, wrapped into it. And that's free. The Club Patriot portion is free. Um, the uh, chat room has not been finalized yet, but it's in the process as we understand it of being done. So that's the left side. That is completely free, no obligation. If you want to do business, meaning dealing with business owners, you have an idea for a product or you have a patent or something. I don't know. Everybody's in a different place, right? I can't possibly know that. Uh, but if you want to do business with uh, global business owners and you want to share ideas or you want to do channel partnerships or you want to learn how to create streams of income from home and get away from your day job, which I would imagine most everyone wants to cut that cord, um, that is a one-time membership. We don't particularly get involved in that, Holly and I. That's a uh, beautiful brain trust that Chris has put together long before we were on here. So we're not benefiting in any way from that specifically. We're just telling you that there's two sides to this. So there's been concerns for people about a financial uh, you know, commitment, not required by any means. You have the, the, the Club Patriot portion to connect. Again, if you want to be on the business side or do any of that kind of stuff, that's a separate you know, um, uh, department. Uh, in, in, in sconce within Club Patriot, and we'll leave that link in the description. Holly, thanks for joining us as always. Love having you on and look forward to uh, part two, if you will, next week. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Take care. Bye, everybody.